Hello and welcome back to Auto Social UK and it's the return of the vlogs um, or the vlog style videos at least. So as you can see I'm walking in the rain in London um, and I may have messed up a little bit so I'm picking up a Tesla and I decided that I was going to get the train down but didn't really look at how far away the train station was to where I'm picking it up and it's a 20 minute walk and it's raining. But never mind, at least I'm picking it up at uh, four o'clock and it is 20 to four. So at least I have got enough time to obviously get there. I've got a bug on my face, oh my God. But yes, I'm picking it up from like the Tesla collection hub, but I'll check back in once I get there. Probably looking like a drowned rat. So here it is. So this is a Model 3. This is the extended range, so 370 miles of range, but it's not performance um, and it's white on white. It's really, really pretty. Um, didn't think I liked Teslas. I really, really like the look of this and I'm really excited to see what other people in my life think. Um, but yeah, just let's, let's go have a look inside because this is pretty, pretty swish. Okay, so I'm kind of seeing why girls like these cars so much. Look at this interior. This is very, very pretty. I'm kind of loving the whole vibe. Um, just a quick shout out to obviously Tesla for organizing this. Their collection center, it was so straightforward. Like literally can't fault it. Obviously I had a nightmare trying to find it by foot. Had I driven, it would have been a lot simpler. Um, but yeah, Beth showed me around the car. Obviously not too much because it's all contactless at the moment. Went through everything there is to play around with, which there is a lot, a lot to play around with. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I have, I've reserved kind of doing any research on this car because I really want this to be like my instant reactions of what the car's like without too many like preconceptions. So we'll see how I get on. Hello from a very sunny Braintree. Um, I've brought the Tesla to work with me this morning because I had some work to do. Um, and I thought whilst it's here, and whilst the weather's lovely, we'll just go over the specific um, specifications of this particular car. So this is the Model 3 Long Range. So this will do 360 miles on a full charge. It's got a top speed of 145 miles per hour and it will do 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds, which is pretty rapid and it does feel pretty rapid. So the base price of this car is actually 47 and a half thousand pounds. So it is quite expensive. This pearlescent white paint, which is actually quite beautiful, is actually included. This is the free Tesla paint color, um, but the wheels have actually been upgraded to 19 inches and they're 1,500 pounds. Now, in my opinion, this is a very sleek and stylish car. There's no denying that. I do think it's absolutely beautiful. However, I do just feel like the wheels let it down. I know this is the Tesla style, but for an upgraded wheel option, I'd want them to look a little bit more aggressive. In my opinion, this is very sleek. It's very stylish. It could be a tad clinical. I do think it could look a little boring. Could I say that? I don't know. It is absolutely stunning, but I just think that wheel design just lets it down very, very slightly. So moving on to the interior, I know I did go over this a little bit, um, but just to give you a price. This is the black and white leather interior, and this is a £1,100 option, but wow. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. Wow, right? This interior is what's made me fall in love with this car. Would I love it if it had black leather? Probably not as much as I love it now, which kind of makes me feel a little bit 
at a crossroads with this car because I feel like I love it because of the interior. However, for me personally, this interior wouldn't be practical. Therefore, I would have to go for a much more boring option. And then I think that the Tesla could come across as just super clinical, super, I mean, it's minimalistic, but does it take the minimalistic to an extreme? I'm not, I haven't quite made up my mind so far. Um, just to go through a few things driving through London yesterday, because it did take me three hours to get home. Um, it was a beautiful drive, absolutely beautiful. I did not feel like that three hours um, was hard work. It was really enjoyable. I had my, I'm, I'm gonna call it adaptive cruise control, but I know that this car actually does more than adaptive cruise control. I had that on and that was absolutely fabulous. The only thing I was a little bit disappointed about is it doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, I always go to the Apple Maps in any car. I haven't used a car sat-nav for years, so it freaked me out a little bit to have to use the in-car sat-nav. I just thought I'd actually try and show you the in-car sat-nav, and then I realised that, it, I mean, it is pretty hard to find your way around this car. You do start to get used to it, but I was trying to find it then, and I was like, oh my God, where is it? But I'm pretty sure you just pull this down. Voila, there it is. So, I mean, it's not that difficult. Uh, yeah, navigate. I mean, let's quickly put in grid serve. Awesome. And then that brings that up. So, I mean, yes, okay, it was fantastic. I had no problems with the actual sat nav at all. My problem was, is just me personally, I get used to something and then I don't like to stray away from it. Things like um, the view to kind of see how you're moving in lane. I found that slightly difficult because obviously I'm used to the Apple Maps. So this wasn't as clear to show you what lane you're supposed to be in and driving through London, that freaked me out a little bit. However, it was, it was perfectly adequate. I'm just a little bit disappointed. It doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I did actually pick this car up with around 250, 260 miles and we're now on 160. So I've used 100 miles. It's about 70 back from London and then 20 to work again this morning. So that is about right for what I've used. Plus I have given it kind of a heavy blast. So I'm not surprised I've gone through that electric. I probably could get back to London on Monday with this electric. However, I would quite like to give it a charge. So I'm gonna go head up to GridServe now and I'll check back in when I get there. You guys know the grid serve drill by now, don't you? <laughs> um, so this is basically how you use the grid serve. So obviously open up the cap. So we're gonna start by obviously connecting the car up. So that's all connected in. And then the next step, you have to present your card. So. And then should just start charging as long as all is okay verifying okay we're charging literally that easy so for those of you that are new here and haven't heard me speak about grid serve before it is braintree's electric forecourt and look at this it's pretty spectacular so you've of course got all of the 90 kilowatt chargers down the sides and then you've got the 300 kilowatt charging stations down the middle. So these will literally charge your cars in 30 minutes for a 0 to 80% charge. Um, you have actually got a Tesla only section at the back there, but it hasn't been working for a little while. However, it's not very busy, so it's not really too much of an issue. You've also got the chargers for your Zoe's down the front. And yeah, you've got everything you need on the inside, which is like a Costa. You've also got um, obviously your WH Smith with all your food and um, we'll go in there in a moment and I'll show you. So this is the upstairs of GridServe which has only really just reopened. You can see my little Tesla down there. Um, this are, these are really cool. So these are actually some bikes which are actually free to use but when you're biking you can 
watch your car charge in, but you can also put charge back, which is pretty awesome. Um, you've also got these meeting rooms, which you can hire out for, I think it's like 50 pounds, which is really good value for money. Um, and you've also got the seating area over there. Yeah, it's pretty cool really, downstairs. You've got the Costa Coffee, just gone and pick one up down there. And then obviously your WH Smiths. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So I've just about finished my Costa and I think it's time to stop charging. So I've been charging for 30 minutes and I've got 83%, so that's absolutely perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and stop it. Okay, let's check up a little update then on the charging. So half an hour has got us up to 275 miles. So that should be more than enough to get me around and then get me back to London tomorrow. So very, very happy. Oh, should we check how much it cost? £6.68. Not bad, actually. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm now on day three with the Tesla. I've just had a really nice brunch with the girls. We all went out in the car. Claire managed to find how to turn on the Christmas music. So we was playing Christmas music as we were going down the high street, which was very funny. We've had a good laugh in this car, actually. The girls loved it. But I'm now heading over to my dad's for a barbecue and he doesn't know I've got this car. And I have a feeling that he's gonna love this car. So he loves the gadget and I know he's just gonna absolutely love this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm telling him I'm coming, but he doesn't know that I've got this car and I'm gonna gauge his reaction. It's all open. Oh, did she tell you I had one? Oh, I'm just trying to leave it as a surprise. So push, push it in at one end and then one end will pop out or you can, yeah, or just touch, pull the door, but it's quite hard to get used to. <laughs> He's got a laptop. On. Yeah. On a screen. Oh my God. It's got its own Spotify account. Yeah, Riley can't jump in this one. It's definitely too white. It's whiter than the um, the other one. So everything, everything is done via this. So even if I want to open the glove box, I have to go car. Um, oh god, I can't even remember. Oh, there, look, glove box. Oh my god. But it's great, it's a lot of fun, but that's a bit annoying. And like, you open your boot like that and you lock it like that. And obviously, your mirrors and stuff, you adjust your mirrors. So I'd press mirrors and then use this little twiddly thing yeah. to adjust it. So, what if you come out of the supermarket with all your groceries? You've got to turn it on and turn that on to open the boot. I don't, I think you can do it on your phone. Oh. But I haven't, I haven't set that bit up yet. Um, it is um, Nord 60 in 4.2 seconds. So. You go back to doing, yeah. <laughs> I always thought the passenger was being dramatic, but I actually drove as a passenger in it the other day, and I think it's because when obviously you're in control of it, you know when you stick your foot down, so you half expect that, like, that acceleration. Yeah. Whereas when you're not, when you're a passenger, and you don't know when it's coming, that's when it turns your stomach more. Go and do it to get tissue. No, it hurts. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really too bad that time. <laughs> and it's it's just a simple look at it. it's, it's nothing flat the outside. Is it? No, it's it's designed to be like that. Mm. That's why it, it, I don't know. That's why I'm in two minds with it because so I'm torn on the fact that I think it's very elegant 
it's very understated, but is it clinical? I think it is borderlining on being too clinical. Well, I have a friend that, um, for a treat, takes um, cars out, hires sports cars out. Yeah. And he took, he took a um, R8 and had it for the weekend. Yeah. And then he had one of these, and he was like, oh my God, the, the power. Yeah. And he said, nothing like it. That instant power. So this is the fourth and final day with the Tesla and today I'm taking it back. So I'm heading back up to London now. I'm gonna go pick up Hannah. If you wanted to see an extension of this video, then Hannah's actually gonna be vlogging from today onwards. So if you wanna see a little bit of more of that, then head over to Hannah's channel. Um, how have I found the Tesla? I've been blown away. This is a fantastic car. Really, really great. As a car enthusiast, it doesn't tick all the boxes for me. It's just a tad too clinical. I feel like as amazing as it is, when those gimmicks run out, it's a little bit soulless. And I feel bad saying that because I can't fault it. It's comfortable, it's powerful, it's enjoyable, but I just, I'm missing the buttons. I'm missing the digital cockpit. I wanna see how fast I'm going in front of me. I wanna see some digital dials. It's just lacking that kind of involvement for me personally. And saying that now, I feel a little bit bad because looking at it, this color is beautiful. Again, we know my issues with the wheels. These door handles, I'm not a huge fan of. I just think that's not a particularly um, easy method to do. On the inside again, interior is absolutely beautiful, but I could never ever live with this. I'm way, way, way too clumsy. Um, on the interior, obviously, using everything on the screen is a tad fiddly. Like to open the glove box, you have to literally go through the screen. I absolutely love that you get Spotify included. That is a huge, 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 huge bonus for me. I hate that you haven't got Apple CarPlay, but this sat nav, is good enough but that's pretty much as good as it gets um the gimmicks are a load of fun like when will a fart ever not be funny exactly but when the gimmicks run out it's a little boring in my opinion i love that everything's so sleek but give me some dials give me some buttons like give me some interaction it's just it's just not for me personally. But there's one massive thing that puts it into perspective for me about this car. This car with some upgrades and the long range is £60,000. The Porsche Taycan is 140. The Audi e-tron GT is 120. This car is half the price of those cars. Does it do most things as well? Yes. Has it got more range? Yes. So when you put it like that, do, but do you want to pay double the price for one of those cars? I don't know. But then that, that comes down to how much you love your cars. A car enthusiast will pay double to have one of those cars because they're set up to be driver focused. The Audi e-tron GT, you feel like you're in a cockpit of a sports car. The Porsche Taycan, you've got that connection with the car. This is just lacking for me. It doesn't feel like a car, it feels like a gadget. So that is my overwhelming thoughts from this weekend. But if you wanna see a continued of my thoughts and Hannah's thoughts, then head over to her channel and see the rest of the video. We're gonna be spending a day in London and she's gonna be vlogging it. But thank you so much for watching this video today. If you've liked it, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. Please go easy on me, Tesla lovers. I love this car, I love it. I see why you love it. It's just not for me. And let's leave it at that. But if you wanna see more videos like this, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And until next time, bye.